Once the client has approved the IPS, you as the portfolio manager can proceed to the next stage, which is to construct a suitable portfolio based on the IPS. This is done by setting the investor's capital market expectations, deciding on a strategic asset allocation, varying the strategy through tactical asset allocation, followed by security selection. You can use the analogy of a football team to help you understand the process. Imagine you're a football coach and your client is the football club owner who hired you to coach the team. Your task is to win the game for the football club owner. Forming capital market expectations is analogous to the preparation and study of the competition. Strategic asset allocation is analogous to forming a game strategy to win. Tactical asset allocation are deviations from the strategy based on circumstances as the game proceeds. For example, if the team is behind, the coach may move one midfielder up to be a forward as a tactical move. And security selection is the selection of specific players to fill in each role. With that, let's discuss each of these steps in detail. Capital market expectations are the investor's expectations concerning the risk and return prospects of asset classes. Historically, only the broad categories of equities and bonds were considered. More recently, alternative investments have gained more prominence. Alternative investment asset classes include hedge funds, private equity funds, commodities and real estate. We can further divide equities by whether the issuing companies are domestic or foreign, large or small, or whether they are traded in developed or emerging markets. For example, a US investor may want to divide equities into large-cap US stocks, small-cap US stocks, developed international stocks, and emerging market stocks. With bonds, we can divide the overall universe of bonds into asset classes based on criteria such as whether they're domestic or foreign, based in developed or emerging markets, investment grade or high yield. Again, for a US investor, bonds can be subdivided into investment grade bonds, high yield bonds, global bonds and emerging market debt. Overall, the asset classes considered should approximately cover the universe of permissible investments specified in the IPS. Once the universe of asset classes has been specified, you as the portfolio manager will collect data on long-term expected returns, standard deviation of returns and correlations of returns with those of other asset classes. The correlation of returns is stated in the form of a correlation matrix where each cell represents the correlation of one asset to the other. The diagonal of the matrix should all be one as the correlation of each asset with itself is one and the matrix is symmetrical along this diagonal. Once the capital market expectations have been set, we can proceed to determining the strategic asset allocation. Based on the expected returns, standard deviation of returns, and the correlation of returns of the various asset classes, an efficient frontier can be constructed using a computer program. With this, you can determine the capital allocation line and the optimal risky portfolio for your client. By combining the risk and return objectives from the IPS, you can identify that portfolio which best meets the risk and return requirements of your client. The asset allocation for this optimal portfolio is the strategic asset allocation for your client's portfolio. For simplicity of illustration, we narrow down the strategic asset allocation to just US large cap stocks, investment grade bonds and US treasury bonds as the risk-free asset in the following proportions. One simple way to construct this portfolio is to replicate the returns of the Dow Jones Industrial Average for US large cap stocks exposure and an investment grade bond index for the bond exposure. If you choose to construct and maintain the proportions of stocks, bonds and risk-free bonds as per the strategic asset allocation, you are a passive manager and your client's portfolio is a passive portfolio. Otherwise, if you deviate from the strategic allocation to take advantage of perceived short-term opportunities, you're said to be pursuing an active strategy. For example, if your analysis shows that stocks are overvalued relative to bonds, you may deviate from the strategic asset allocation 
by underweighting stocks and overweighting bonds in the short term. This is known as the tactical asset allocation. You can take the active management further by deviating from the index weights within each asset class. For example, if the weight of Apple shares in the Dow Jones is currently 5% and your analysis shows that Apple stock is undervalued, you may choose to overweight on Apple. This is known as security selection. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.